ਤੇ ਘਰ ਦੇ ਕੰਸਟਰਕਟਰ ਦੇ ਖਿਲਾਫ ਐਮ ਡੈਡਲੌਕ ਅਵੋਇਡਿੰਗ ਐਮ ਡੀ ਪੀ ਲੈਟ ਅਸ ਨਾਓ ਸੀ ਹਾਊ ਡੈਡਲੌਕ ਇਜ਼ ਬੀਨ ਡਿਫਾਈਨਡ ਡੈਡਲੌਕ ਮੀਨਸ ਪਰਮਨੈਂਟ ਬਲੋਕਿੰਗ ਆਫ ਸੈਟ ਆਫ ਪ੍ਰੋਸੈਸਸ ਥੈਟ ਈਦਰ ਕੰਪੀਟ ਫੋਰ ਸਿਸਟਮ ਰਿਸੋਰਸਸ ਔਰ ਕਮਿਊਨੀਕੇਟਸ ਵਿਦ ਈਚ ਅਦਰ देयर इज नो एफिशिएंट सॉल्यूशन फॉर डेडलॉक हियर व्हिच मींस दैट डेडलॉक इज इन्वॉल्वड इन सम ऑफ द अदर नीड्स इट आल्सो इन्वॉल्व्स कंफ्लिक्टिंग नीड्स फॉर रिसोर्सस फॉर टू और मोर प्रोसेसेस दैट मींस ईदर वन टू और मोर प्रोसेसेस वांट्स टू यूज सेम रिसोर्सस साइमल्टेनियसली example is spring rolls the concept of deadlock from a real world point of view here we see a crossroad where because a car wants to travel can travel and since there is no signal system over here no car can be stopped here we see that the cars in this uh, example being spring land up in a conflict that is no car can move forward or can travel until and unless one of the car rolls rolls back which means that the car has to move back this system is the deadlock area this is an example for deadlock with processes we have two processes over here and two records over here process q and process c and the request all the resources are d and c respectively we now see step by step how these processes make action to the processor here the process c first requests for d and log c and simultaneously process q requests for c and log c now these two processes request for the remaining resource but since this resource has already been logged by the other process they cannot acquire it now thus the situation leads to deadlock condition let us now study an example of deadlock with memory here the space available in memory is 200 kb and the process 1 request for 80 kb and process 2 request for 70 kb which means total of 150 kb has been occupied thus if the resources go to second event that is acquiring 60 kb and 80 kb the request can't be granted and the block occurs if the processes move to the second step now we learn about the conditions due to which the block occurs first condition is mutual exclusion which means only one process may use a resource at a time and other processes has no idea about what resource is being used by which process second condition is hold and seek this means a process may hold allocated resources while awaiting assignment of other resources this also means that a process may request the resource and block some other resource which it has already been allocated let us now study the two remaining conditions for deadlock the third condition is no preemption this means that no resource can be forcibly removed from a process holding it or a resource can be removed only if a process wishes to do so the fourth and the last condition is circular wait this means a closed chain of processes occurs such that each process holds at least one resource needed by the next resource in the chain but this request cannot be granted since the request process is already been hold by one process in the system now we see the second 
duty of this work which means that most surety but at my pocket the three conditions are mutual exclusion no preemptory and golden rule about which we have already learned now we see the existence of deadlock which says that the deadlock occurs in the system the conditions are mutual exclusion no preemptory golden rule and the surety of deadlock is given by circular rule now as we know that deadlock exists in the system we need to learn some way to avoid it and thus see about deadlock avoidance here a decision is made dynamically whether the current fixes allocation request will is granted potentially leads to a deadlock or not it requires knowledge of future process request and this knowledge is difficult to get from cost which shows what is an approach to deadlock avoidance do not start a process if it demands lead to deadlock it has to analyze that whether its demand will lead to a deadlock or not after said by then don't start that process the second method is do not grant an incremental resource request to a process if this allocation might lead to deadlock this means that if a process already has been allocated some resource and is requesting for some other resource which might lead to deadlock then that request should not be granted now let us see how resource allocation can be denied that is if some request is leading to deadlock how the request can be denied this algorithm is referred to as bounce algorithm let us learn about few terms being used in the algorithm state of the system is the current allocation of resources to process which tells us which resource has been allocated to which process state state is where there is at least one sequence that does not result in deadlock which means some process sequence is there whose request will not lead to a deadlock and until state is there where there exists no such sequence which will lead to the same state or we can say that each of the sequence would lead to a deadlock now we see an example of domination of state state by applying bounce algorithm here we have three matrices and two vectors the matrices of plain matrix p allocation matrix a and the matrix c minus e and the vectors are resource vector r and available vector v the plain matrix shows that which process is claiming for what number of and which process the allocation matrix shows that which resources have already been allocated to what processes and the c minus e shows that which processes are yet to be allocated the resource vector r gives the total number of resources that can be allocated and the available vector shows that how many resources are now left and can be allocated this is the initial state we see that the available resources for r1 is 0 for r2 is 1 and for r3 is 1 while the still resources that need to be allocated are for p1 it is 2 2 2 for p2 it is 0 0 1 for p3 it's 1 0 3 and for p4 it's 4 2 0 thus we see that process p1 p2 and p4 if get executed will lead to deadlock since the resources are not available but p4 if get executed will not lead to a deadlock thus we get p2 executed now we see that how p2 goes for completion the row of p2 in all three matrices that is plain matrix p allocation matrix a 
అండింగ్ మ్యాచెస్ టీ మైనస్ 0 టు 20 0 0 0 అండర్ రిసెషన్ సెట్ హడ్ బిన్ ట్రేడ్ బై షీఫీల్డ్ ఆర్ నౌ ఆల్రెడీ అవైలబుల్ విత్ కే జీ బెస్ట్ బై రిసెషన్ ఇన్ జీ బై సన్ సెట్ టీ అండ్ సి వి అగైన్ కంపేర్ దిస్ స్ట్రక్చర్ విత్ ది మ్యాచెస్ టీ మైనస్ 2 వెర్ టీ వన్ ఇస్ వెయిటింగ్ ఫర్ 2 2 3 టీఫీ వన్స్ 1 0 3 అండ్ టీఫో వన్స్ 4 2 0 లెట్ షోర్ దట్ ఎనీ ఆఫ్ ది స్ట్రక్చర్స్ ఇఫ్ ఎగ్జిక్యూటెడ్ విల్ నాట్ లీడ్ టు అ డెడ్ లాక్ సిస్టమ్ దెస్ లెట్ అస్ సీ వాట్ హ్యాపెన్స్ ఇఫ్ టీ వన్ గెట్స్ ఎగ్జిక్యూటెడ్ ఓకే సో నౌ ఇన్ అ సిమిలర్ ఫ్యాషన్ ది రో ఆఫ్ టీ వన్ ఇస్ ట్రిపుల్ జీరో ఇన్ ఆల్ త్రీ మెట్ ప్రైసెస్ and the recesses have been added again to the available vector v where the recesses are now available as 7 2 3 once again we see that whether p3 or p4 whichever is executed will not do a let deadlock thus we see the next stage when p3 is being executed now when p3 is also executed the recesses are again at added to the available vector where it's now available as 9 3 and 4 and the recess p4 now gets executed thus we see that after p3 the process p4 gets to completion leading to a safe state now let us see what an unsafe state is if instead of P2, the first process which was executed would be P1, then it leads to an unsafe state or to deadlock because P1 requires recesses is 1, 2 and 1, while the available is 0, 1, 1. The request for P1 cannot be granted since the request wants recesses that has been allocated to stand out the process leading to the system in deadlock state. Now let us once revise what we have seen in deadlock avoidance through Banker's algorithm. It wants that maximum recess requirements must be stated in advance. Processes under consideration must be independent, that is no synchronization should be there. There must be a fixed number of recesses to be allocated and the fourth is no process may exist while holding some other recess. This was the basic concept on deadlock.